Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is the software testing lifecycle. The testing of any application is a very important process, and if gone overlooked, can lead to the destruction of that application. Poor user experience because of bugs can make users not use the application at all. Users then switch to rival applications just to avoid these headaches and problems, and now your application no longer can make money. Imagine your bank application never tested its new feature for the drawal process before going live in production. The new feature was supposed to append a decimal and two zeros when a user enters the amount, but instead it gets the decimal place and appends just two zeros to your withdrawal amount. So instead of giving someone $100 on a withdrawal, it gives them $10,000. Now imagine this bug is used for a larger bank that has millions of transactions per second. As you can see, in a matter of minutes, the bank loses millions of dollars depending on when this bug is caught. Then they must invest more money and resources to try to get this money back. This is why testing is so important. Proper testing is done through the software testing life cycle. Done correctly, the software testing life cycle minimizes the amount of bugs that get released to production. No one part of the life cycle is more important than the other, which is why it's important to focus on each step before moving on to the next one. The six key phases of the software testing life cycle that this video will cover include the requirements phase, the planning phase, test case design and test case development phase, environment setup phase, execution phase, and closure phase. First, the requirement phase. Before any testing can be done, the requirements have to be laid out. The requirements are what the business users expect from the application as an end product. And therefore, that becomes your guideline. The requirements are usually provided by a product owner depending on the size of your company. Often, to obtain the full requirements, brainstorming sessions are common. Any unclear parts of the requirements should be discussed. It is better to ask and know rather than to assume and waste everyone's time. The requirements can be very high level at first, which is how the feature will look and be designed. The environments where testing should take place could also be discussed at this time. There are usually two different types of requirements. There are functional and non-functional requirements. Functional describes how the application will act or function and non-functional requirements is usually the look or feel of the application. The planning phase. Now you have gathered an image of how the end result will look like from the requirements phase, but now we need to plan out how we will safely get there. The planning phase documents the testing strategy. Think about the various approaches available. In this phase, it should be discussed where resources are going to be allocated to the testing and what metrics could be used for tracking the testing efforts. The testing tools that will be used should also be discussed in this phase. All of this should be documented in a test plan. The test plan should also include the testing cycles, the scope of testing, the type of testing that will be done, functional and non-functional testing, and finally the environments that will be used for testing. The expected deliverables should also be planned out for what should be expected at the end of each phase, as well as the roles and responsibilities for anyone who will be participating in the testing. Test case design and development phase. So now you have a destination from the requirements phase, and a map with how you plan to get there from the planning phase. But now it's time to look at every turn you will make to actually get to your destination. In the test case design and development phase, you will plan what will be the required test cases to at minimum meet all the requirements previously discussed. After the tests have been written to at least meet the requirements, you can start to think outside of the box about edge cases and negative tests that should also be accounted for in your testing practices to make sure that the end user does not have a bad experience. You should try to get as much test coverage as possible. Test cases should be very descriptive, in a sense where anybody who's not even familiar with the application should have to pick it up and follow the steps and perform the actual flow of the test. This is very important because teams change often. Also, a year later, you don't go back and regression test this manually and can't figure out the steps because you're not familiar with the application anymore. The test case should also list the expected results from every test. Also in this phase, you should see what test data is required for your testing practices. Do you need certain credentials to access this application? Is there a specific setup or does data need to be preloaded into a database so that adequate information can be returned from your testing to simulate a real life user? For organizational purposes, groups of similar test cases can be organized into be a test suite. Make sure at the conclusion of your test that your application can be placed back to the previous state how it was before your test. Any database changes should be reverted back, that way it does not affect any future testing for other tests. If your team has the resources, it should also be communicated about what testing should be automated 
during this cycle. Environment setup phase. So we have our destination, our map, and our step-by-step -step directions, but now what vehicle will we use to get there? Will it be a bike, a train, or maybe even a car? What architecture is needed? What is required for your environment to correctly mimic a production environment that end users will use? Maybe you will need multiple environments. Now is when this must be communicated and allocated properly. In this phase, you should have the hardware, software, configurations, test data, and network that you will use to carry out your testing. This is all included in the testing parameters that you are setting up. Once the environments are set up, smoke tests can be performed to ensure that the environments are properly set up. The execution phase. Now that everything is all planned out, it's time to focus on the execution of your plan. Don't rush this part. Remember, sometimes the actual journey is better than the destination. Let's start executing the test cases that we previously designed. The test should be prioritized in case of time and resource restrictions. Focus on the core functionality first. The results of all the testing efforts should be tracked and recorded. Any bugs or problems found in the testing should be logged and communicated as soon as possible. An analysis should then take place to see if that bug should be fixed before the release or can be backlogged until after. After fixes, all tests should be rerun to confirm the change did not break other components. After this, or if resources allow, new automation test cases should be created for the new functionality. Also, any previously created automated tests should be run now as part of regression to make sure no features were broken with the new development. The closure phase. Now we find reach our destination. It's time to get out of the car, walk around, and see if the destination meets our expectations. In the closure phase, the team should meet and analyze how the testing efforts went. A retro might occur to discuss ways to remove future bottlenecks and better allocate resources. All the results of our testing are given to our managers for sign-off. The requirements should be checked against all the deliverables from all our testing efforts including the test plan, test cases, and test execution. Any open bugs should be communicated and all the documentation of fixed problems should also be enclosed. All of this can be encapsulated in a test closure report. From here, the team should be planning out its release plan for the application. Now with great confidence because of all the testing efforts that were done. It is very hard to catch every bug in the testing phase. But the purpose is to catch as many so that very few bugs actually get released to production and ensure a very enjoyable end user experience. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more videos like this, please click here. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.